Hello, and welcome to this uh, off-the-cuff video for Inkscape. My friend Chris Rogers from England has asked me to show other communities how they can make a group photo that they post online really pop out by using our hover technology. Hovering group photo time! And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you through a step-by-step -step process, hopefully quickly, to show you exactly how you can turn your own group fo photos from your own events, maybe even LGM, uh, into a web interactive hovering masterpiece. Now, there are a couple of caveats to be aware of here. First is that because this uses CSS, uh, Cascading Style Sheets, you do need to be able to embed SVGs in whichever website you want to host this on. If you only have the capacity to have the SVG in, in an image tag, it won't work. And this is because of a security issue in that um, SVGs embedded have access to things like CSS style sheets and JavaScript and so on. But SVGs that are inside an image tag, in fact, anything that's inside an image tag, is deliberately cut off from having access to anything outside, including things like mouse events. So with that caveat being said, let's get into, first of all, showing you what Inkscape has managed to do with its own group group photo for LGM 2016. So as you can see here, we have our Inkscape group photo, and it's just us standing around after our hack fest, very nice. Then what happens is, is that as we drag the mouse over a, any individual person, the um, there is a, a element around that person which animates into existence. Uh, not only showing the outline of the person, but also showing their name and their function within the group. This can happen for any of the in individuals that are inside of the group. And the way this SVG is constructed is pretty basic. Um, what you do is you open up Inkscape, which of course we like. Then you load in the photograph that you wish to add the, the hovers to. And then what we need to do is we need to draw around the people that we wish to hover with that shape that comes into view, right? So these shapes aren't generated, they aren't automatic, uh, even the style of them, you know, how they actually appear to, to the user is all about how you select the options within Inkscape. These are all saved within the SVG. And then what we do as well is we create, I might make this more visible. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a little box for the name of the person to go into. Now with this person, I just need to check, double check this because I haven't memorized all of these names. Is Vili, VA? I'm going to make this, in fact, let's, let's make this a different style from, from the escape one to really show what we're doing here. So what I'm going to do for this particular one is I'm going to make the, um, the, the, the hover area uh, completely invisible and only the, uh, the names will appear, which should be interesting. 
Let me shorten this a little bit. Okay, now once I have my, my objects for this person, I have to push them into a group. So I group them. And then what I do is I go into the XML editor for Inkscape. This is where you can actually edit the XML directly. I go into this group itself and I set a class. So I set class equals. So we set the class web hover. And then what we do is we save as an SVG file. It's important that we save as an SVG file. Now, uh, you can optionally save the, um, the PNG or JPEG that is the actual photograph itself. You can save it as an external or you can embed it into the SVG. It's completely up to you about how you're hosting the, the image. Now to show off what happens, um, I've added the two CSS elements uh, to the Inkscape website. Unfortunately, because of the SVG security concerns, only by asking permission can anybody um, upload an SVG file. Give me team at LGM 2016, London. Photograph. I'm going to put it as copyright for now. I'm going to presume I have the permission. I need to check that at some point. Okay, now the first thing you'll notice is that uh, the, the elements that we've created are completely visible. There's absolutely no difference. That's because this isn't embedded. Um, so what I need to do is I need to use an, an administrative function to turn on embed, which is something that um, we put into the website in order to do these kind of clever things. Now you notice as soon as it's embedded, it's disappeared, except when you hover over any of the items. The way in which it animates is through CSS and also the way in which the hover event works is through CSS. So we're just going to have a quick look at these. So it says SVG special ha handling, and then it just says SVG dot web ho hover opacity by default. This is what happens when you load is set to 0 0.01, which makes it almost invisible. And then the transition is to ease in and out over 0 0.4 seconds. When you hover over it, the opacity goes to one, and then the transition is 0 0.8 seconds to ease in and out. And, and that's basically it. It's not a complicated uh, system but it does require you to have uh, some understand, understanding of what SVG does when you embed it into a page, um, as well as how it interacts with things like style sheets. You'll notice that these two particular uh, CSS elements are within our website's uh, style sheet. Um, they're some, something that we could do, um, we could expand upon to do other things with SVG. Uh, but for now, I'm, I'm happy with just have, having this web hover, this generic sort of addition that allows any kind of image that we upload to contain these hovering elements. Um, but for now, I think that's about it. Please do comment if you have any questions. And uh, thank you for watching.